Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. This is really a part two video to an eco battery install in a club car onward golf cart. Um, thanks for clicking on our channel of Carlisle Projects. My name is Lyle, this is Cameron, world famous yes. Wookiee Bear Davis. And uh, before we get started, we always do uh, a shout out to our t-shirts that we wear. We'll start with Cameron first. Cameron's rocking a t-shirt in a world where you can be anything, be kind to everyone. And what that is, is a mom and daughter team. Um, they're bringing t-shirts out to everyone to bring awareness to autism. Uh, there's a young lady, her name is Jordan. And if you would jump on your phone, computer, um, any smart device and go to a website called uh, www.bekindtoeveryone.com. They bring awareness to autism through cute and awesome t-shirts like the one that Cameron's got on. Uh, just uh, trying to bring awareness and kindness to folks around the world. Um, it's, uh, they also have uh, social media presence through TikTok, Instagram, um, Facebook. Uh, and my t-shirt is Be a Good Human um, with a pineapple. Uh, this young man's name is Nate Simon. Uh, his website is 21pineapples.com. The story behind that is the reason for pineapples is pineapples is uh, kind of a symbol for friendship and hospitality. But the reason for 21 pineapples is he's bringing awareness of kindness and friendship and hospitality to um, Down syndrome. 21 being the 21st chromosome that represents Down syndrome. Um, he sells clothing lines of t-shirts, shirts, and things of that nature. So go to his website at 21pineapples.com to support his program as well. So that covers our t-shirts yep. and their awareness to programs of autism and Down syndrome. So I would appreciate that and I'm sure they would too. But uh, let's get on to our uh, the reason you click the video for the eco battery and what we're doing. Like I said, this is part two. Um, our first video on the channel was the original install of the eco battery, 105 amp, um, 51 volt battery to replace the original um, batteries that came from the factory, the lead acid battery. Uh, an update of how the first year went. Um, the battery itself was flawless. I had no problems at all. We had, um, it performed just as Eco Battery and NOAA promised. We uh, had excellent charge life. Um, I actually um, had to charge it. Uh, we rarely had to charge it. It um, ran constantly for us on weekends we went to downtown constantly in fact noah challenged me to run it completely dead to see how far i could go and it outlasted me uh, i ran it almost 40 miles and i was done um, before the battery died in the dead heat of the summer here um, it did not die. I died. I was done. I wasn't going to ride around on the golf cart anymore. So I know it will last longer than that. The battery, um, as advertised, um, is lighter. We got more torque. It's much faster. I got more speed off the line and we, um, quicker charge times and it took up less space inside the battery compartment and everything as advertised. So we are completely happy with it. But the bonus to it and the reason for this, this video is um, when we installed it, they mentioned to me that they were coming out with a new gauge and an app for it eventually. And the new gauge has come out and a new battery. Wooks and I are going to show you the install of the battery and the gauge okay. so uh, without further ado let's uh do the install and see how it goes what do you think yep anything you want to add no nothing really i mean i could 
say that our phone holds a, a lot, enough charge that it was the, the moon landing. Like our phone holds the whole energy that created the moon landing. Our phones hold enough charge. That the rocket and everything that powered the rocket and communications fits in that phone. No kidding. And the, what's super funny is... So um, in this phone, it holds the same enough charge for as the, the rocket did for like the moon landing. everything. And then what's funny is that they were back then when they had their when the first computers were like this computer holds two megabytes no kidding <laughs> so you can learn which brings me to another interesting fun fact is while you're on your computer jump over to wookie bear fun facts of the day and you can learn so many things from this young man this guy knows so many things and his channel is wookie bear fun facts of the day and you can learn about presidents, flags, and all other kind of things, right? Yes, it's cool. Yeah. What else? That's only it, that they're gonna get bored if I keep talking. Well, I will never get bored. Because <laughs> you're my father. Okay. All right. Let's hit it. So I've taken out the battery and the cooler gives you a, a better view of what it looks like. So all of the cables are all condensed in here. I've, uh, when I did have the battery installed, I took and put all of this uh, wire loom and put all the cables together in a, a little bit neater fashion. I remounted the, a bigger box for more accessories um like the fog lights I've, I've added more fog lights and what have you since then so uh, i needed a bigger box and then cleaned up the area where the cooler was um so the next step is putting the battery in but i'm gonna have to undo this cable harness here because the new um gauge has got a different harness that goes to the battery so i'm gonna have to undo this panel here and this mat because there's a channel that's under here that the wire this is the old the old wire here that went to the battery that runs down through here in a channel and comes out up through here that i'll have to re oh, i'm sorry comes up right here and I'll have to read one from that and uh, attach it to the new battery. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, so stay tuned for that. But I wanted to show you then how much room you have uh, and how clean the new the compartment stays. This is, I just had to clean some dust out, but this is after a year of the old battery. I mean, if you look, you see the mounting bar there? That's where that lead acid leaked on my old bar. That's not from the new battery. But this looks brand new after a year. What I was saying was, you know, this compartment is after a year of driving around the neighborhood and downtown. Um, you couldn't say that with lead acid. You, you, you do see the damage down here from where my lead acid, step out of light. You see where the lead acid ate away at that mounting bar? Um, but the compartment, I've cleaned up a little bit of dust, but that goes to say um, why I wanted to switch to the lithium battery pack. One is all of that power is in this one block right here and you have this big block right here to do whatever you want, um, whether it's speakers or or uh, a cooler in this use that I use it for, um, or whatever you wanna do. Okay, so what we need to do is get this cord, which is the meter, the gauge cord, back out of uh to the system 
So I'm gonna undo that. The other end is this right here and pull it down through here. So unfortunately it's quite a task because the way the club cars built these things is that you have to loosen this bolt, this bolt, these bolts to sort of lift up the body, which I'll have to loosen this speaker to get the body to come up slightly so that I can um, get the wire to loosely come through this chamber and pull it up. I may also have to loosen, like I've said before, this here. And the way to loosen it is panning over to here. You pull these tabs out and then this will just loosen and you loosen this bolt and this bolt and this will come loose. So that's worst case scenario, but what I'm gonna do first is loosen a couple of these and see if it'll give me a little bit of freedom to pull the wire loose so I don't have to do all that. So one thing that you, you can do if you want to do it kind of is you can run it down this channel and there's an, a way to run it from the outside underneath the carriage and up but your wire would be exposed to the elements and you'd be done i could do that as well um, but my dealer did it the right way um, as he does everything else and ran it through the dash and under this mat, cause there's a channel here that's built for wiring that all of this goes through, that comes out here. This is the channel that you can see. Once I get this mat removed, you'll be able to see it. Um, and I would prefer to do it that way. Uh, I, I just don't want uh, the wires hanging underneath there myself, but feel free to do that your way. It would take you a tenth of the time that this is going to take and much easier um, and nothing against that way i'm just a little ocd so uh, uh i'm going to do it the other way but uh it's your golf cart do it the way you want to right wooks mm -hmm. all right what i me and my dad do is we took up this one in this one and those other two but make sure when you take these out to put these in a safe place because you don't want to loosen that just makes it very hard to do the rest okay so me and Wilkes are going to go ahead and take this strip off and i'm going to show him how to do it since he's never done it before and it's just like taking any body panel off if you see these little tabs right there you see that little hole mm -hmm. Put your body puller or plastic rivet tool in there just like a screwdriver and it'll pop it out. So what's this straight you can struggle with it if you've never popped a body panel rivet out. It is struggling. You're struggling. So you take it out, pull it, and you just pull it out. Because it's just like a little plastic pop rivet, see? And you see how it's got these little tabs in there? Mm -hmm. You just don't want to break them. You can use your fingernails if you got strong fingernails. But I don't have strong ones. I'll snap it like a dry twig. And then they'll just pop out. The problem with me is I don't trust myself and I don't want to get in trouble with you. See, we get in trouble. We'll just go buy new ones. Okay. okay. And then we'll pull those out. One fell under the tire. And then we just pull them out. You see that just pull, pulls out just like in a car. These are how they, you don't know it, but these are how they hold a lot of car body panels or hold on inside of your dashboard and what have you. All the adults out there know that. But So now move your arm so that the weight's not holding it. You'll see once we loosen the speaker in there, this body panel will be able to lift up. What I'm doing now is just removing the speaker mount or the speaker 
because that was holding the body panel to the um, plastic box. So see how that moves now? That'll give me a little play with this. See? So we move this and move that. That'll give us play. I'm gonna get a zip tie. I'm just a little nervous with that speaker dangling on speaker wire. Wow. I know it's no big deal. This gives me a little bit of comfort. All right, so now that we got all this loosened up, everything's kind of free. Um, I'm gonna loosen these two um, star bits uh, to get the mat free from underneath that. And my trusty star bit box. And there, first try, whoops. That means we're living right. In case you're curious, or that is a T40. And take your advice about separating them. So what me and Daddy did was we loosened these two. They're just duplicates of the ones over there. And so we were having a struggle with the mat of like trying to figure out the wires and holding it. And so I came up with an idea just to take it off and we carefully put it, took it through these um, pedals and then we just put it to the side. Yeah, it helped out a lot because we were fighting, trying to hold it up while still trying to fight it with these wires. And I cut the wire once we did that and pulled it through, it was real easy. Probably should have, a rookie mistake, probably should have left it attached and, and cut it then and used it as fish to pull the new wire through. But, uh, um, hey, we all make rookie mistakes. Okay, so what we've done is we took it apart like we showed where we could lift up this body part and it made it real easy to fish the wire, a lot easier than I thought. So we were able to fish the wire underneath here, right through this channel here. Um, the new gauge has got two plugs on the end, and we'll fish that through this channel. I'll tape, um, I'll tape it down so that it's protected even more, and we'll go up through the dash, and I'm gonna have to redo my dash because the hole for the new meter is too big now um but i was uh lucky enough my dealer gave me a new dash um thanks for that so uh more to come on that so that'll be the final step once we get everything we wired and the battery put back in so what we did is we put the mat back and what we put these two these on your side is kind of the same but these these little, two here this. right yep and then we put them back in and we put these two screws in the exact same thing on your side and then we put in we put these screws and those screws on your side and then that's Put the speaker back in. Put the speaker back in. And we left enough extra wire because it's going to plug into the side of the battery, which will sit right here. And we left all the extra in the dash because we didn't quite know where we're going to put the meter when we get done. Right? Yep. Okay, no. Watch it to the end. So let's talk about the dashboard that I did. One of the most vulnerable things on your golf cart is your key switch. I don't know if you know it, but 
the keys for your golf cart fit all golf carts. I'm told that if you have a club car key, it fits all the club cars. And when I found this out, I had, did some research and I found the stinger switch. So it's real easy to do. You take your key fob out, it unscrews, and you slide this thing, stinger module in, and it's a plug and play harness. It basically take the red wire, plug it into the red wire, the blue wire into the blue wire, and so forth and so on, and then it just screws into the back, and then you assign a, di um, a sequence of numbers that you want to remember, and program it into the stinger switch, and that's what your code is for your golf cart. The second thing is, uh, what I installed is a fast charging USB port. Um, so there's two ports there for USB charging or any other accessories. The third module there is the non-light <coughs> six toggle switches. Um, I bought those from Amazon and you can get the, it comes with a charging port, but uh, those are interchangeable. They pop in and out instead of the extra charging ports that come with it. And uh, use those, and then they come with numerous different stickers that you can charge, uh, change in those uh, um, lights. Uh, when you turn it on, they light up blue um, for you to easily see at night. And um, for example, that first light switch has a bunny on it. Um, my Basset Hound and I go out um, searching for bunnies at night. She likes to spot them out and start barking at them. So on the side of my golf cart, as you can see in some of the previous shots in this video, I have uh, some LED lights on the side of the golf cart. And when I flip that switch that has the bunny on it, that lights up those side lights so she can see um, those are high um, front lights and then some are back tail lights um, that we can light up for tailgating and such and then the two far right hand sides are heavy duty uh, LED light bars and then finally on the far right is the new eco battery gauge which I'll expand on um, in just a second. So once I got the battery back mounted in, it's just as simple as uh, putting your positives and your negatives back on and tighten your bolts in. And it comes with these caps to put on. I left this one off so you could see. Um, and then the meter screws into this uh, cable attachment there. And you put your uh, battery mounting bolt goes all the way down to the carriage underneath it. A cool new addition this year to the Eco Battery 105 amp 51 volt is the on off switch located between the positive and negative terminal on the battery itself. If you need to kill the voltage to the golf cart, you simply push the button. In addition to that, Noah with Eco Battery tells me that those little pigtails at the end of the harness for the gauge that attaches directly to the battery itself is for future use with a canvas charging unit and controller. Last but not least, let's talk about the gauge just for a minute. Um, what I like about it, it is simple, it's digital, it's clear, it's bright at night, and it's uh, easy to read. There's three simple lines. The top line shows my voltage. Um, as I go lower and lower and lower on the percentage, obviously my voltage number will show lower. The middle line shows my percentage so that I, I know where I'm at as I'm riding through downtown, etc. And the bottom line shows my uh, amps that I'm pulling. Uh, and it shows the minute I flip a light on or more lights, it will show me the tenth of an amp that I'm pulling. So it's, it's dead on. Um, I'm very happy with what it says. And uh, it keeps me up to date to show exactly where I'm at. Uh, just a small FYI only. It shows 99%. That is a full charge. That's a factory default. No, with Eco Battery, it showed me that that is the factory default. And um, as a side note, there's an app coming out for your phone. This new gauge is Bluetooth enabled. Um, that app will be out between 60 and 90 days now. 
Um, more information to come. I'll probably do an updated video once that comes out because I don't know much about it to, t to share with you now. But uh, I'm excited to see what that entails. So more to come on that. Well, everybody, thanks for checking out our video. Wilkes and I appreciate the support. If you have any questions that we didn't cover in the install video, just leave them below in the comment section. And remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And also, the most important thing, remember, be a good human, especially in these times today. Take care and be good. See ya.